Hi, welcome to week 10 of my ketamine treatments. I'll show you one of the things I do find mindful at times. I think it's time to tackle some of those cab receipts. I've been putting them off too much. Like my screensaver, that's a picture of Flat Rock I took with my drone a couple years ago. save my receipts for 12 months. To the best of my knowledge, submit. Done. You hear a lot of people complain about veterans affairs, but I just filled out a bunch of uh, cab receipts, taxi receipts, to get me to and from my ketamine appointments. So 
I'm not going to complain too much. Plus, they're the ones paying for my ketamine treatments as well. Come on up. Get comfy. Now I'm stuck. Laundry time again. I always do my wife's nursing clothing separate. Stay over in that pile. My wife's cute little compression socks for work. Another task on the go. I usually love doing laundry in the summer months, like late spring, early fall, because I love hanging it out on a clothesline. There's something relaxing and mindful about taking in clothes and hanging it on a clothesline. I don't know what it is, but it just sets me right at ease. I find it peaceful, unless there's a dog out barking or something, but usually it's pretty good. A little bit of snow. After that little walk, which was nice, I'm motivated to do another task. It is time to descale my Keurig. It's not hard, it's just time consuming. I'm just gonna use cheap old vinegar, and I'll smart the last time I wrote down the ratio of vinegar to water on the side instead of having to YouTube it. Now, how do I put it in descale mode? I'm pretty sure the power needs to be off. And I can't remember if it was the 8 and the 12. I'll try that first. Oh, look at that. Descale popped on. And it's flashing. So, that means I did it right. So now I just got to put the water back on and the vinegar combo. Get a cup, catch that, I almost forgot, and hit start. And it says descaling, so that's perfect. It's working, I did it. Now it's gonna run itself through about six times and I won't make you watch it. Get rid of the old filter, that can go in the gear. Cause I have new ones to replace it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this soak in water now because that's part of the process. Yeah, let her soak for a few minutes. Made it to the next phase. Add some water. I give her a good rinse to get rid of the vinegar taste. The scariest part of this procedure is waiting for that light to come back on because it blinks out and you're tempted to push the power button and you're not sure what you're supposed to do, but I'm pretty sure you just wait. One of the reasons waiting for that light to come back on makes me nervous is because I had one of these before and uh, the light didn't come back on and it turned out it was broken. Uh, overheated and some sensor inside tripped or whatever so they sent me a new one anyway so I'm gonna wait for that light to come on fingers crossed while I'm waiting I'll put that filter back in Good enough. It's 
Still no light. Uh-oh. Let's see what happens. Yes. It's alive. Now to test it out. My K cups are all nice and filled up. I'll go with a dark roast this time. The presets are still good. Scott's burn. What happened to Central Dairies? They cut on fire the other night, Central Dairies did. They were one of their warehouses. No injuries, nobody was hurt. So that's a good thing. So I'll stick with Scott's burn this time. The cream is cream, right? I'm not brand loyal. Although, yeah, Central Dairy's milk. <laughs> in case you're wondering why I always pour the cream in while it's still percolating, it's just to avoid having to stir it with a spoon when it's done. That's it. No other reason. Let's see. It's blending itself. All right. Taste test time. Yeah, she's good. I'm good. I'm happy with it anyway. Cheers. I'm going to read Holly for a little bit, but I think I'm going to medicate first. Oh, the deck is dry. I can wear my flip-flops. Don't have to put on those big old Dunlops this time. And what a day it is. Getting the sunburn already. First responders are busy. Feel like a kid dangling my feet. That's the little stove I used last night. See, to give you an idea how big it is. It's only a little handheld. Perfect for a cup of coffee. Before I read, I need to reorder. Where are you? Indica. There you are, perfect. This guy here, it's my favorite. So I'm gonna order some of those now. Yay, it's on the way. It's time. The not so fun part of doing laundry is folding.
Wheel of Fortune is about to start and I'm not half finished yet. Yes, technology. There we go. Paused. You can wait. Last item. And I'm done. There we go. <clears throat> Time for Wheel of Fortune. One of the nice things about pausing it is I can skip ahead through the commercials now until it's ready to go. There we go. See how fast the weather changes? Was nice and sunny. Fog's in. At least it's not snowing. Happy Thursday, St. John's, specifically Cowan Heights. Yeah, it's Ketamine Thursday again. It's that time. Go get more stuff done. I have 20 minutes left, 19 minutes left to eat. So I'll be within that two hour time limit. But it's hard to eat when you're not hungry and you're not in the mood to eat. What should I get? There's no protein bars left. I could make some toast and eggs, but I'm not in the mood for eggs. Not in the mood for toast either. Maybe I'll just eat a banana for now. I suppose you went up there. I know. Big old sook. Huh? You big old sook. Thank you. So today is my 14th treatment coming up and Honestly, I don't feel any difference. I don't notice any difference. It's uh, could be just me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too focused on my negative emotions to notice any successful progress. I am not sure. I just don't feel it. Like I don't feel the joy. I don't feel the love. I don't feel the happiness. Like none of that. I don't feel it. And um, and yeah, the, the biggest thing I guess I notice is there's a slight edge taken off my suicidal thoughts. I mean, the suicidal thoughts are there every single day. It's just that most days lately, or some days out of those, it seems like the desire is lower, if that makes sense. It's like the volume's turned down on my on my desire to kill myself, <laughs> which I have no plan, no intentions, so don't get panicky over that. Cause, uh, but suicide is one of those things that I can I can talk to you. I'll talk to you about suicide more than I will the weather, especially lately, because I hate the weather. <laughs> hate suicide too, but poor joke. Just trying to lighten the mood, I guess. <laughs> Oh look, my, anyway, I'm hoping that things get better. 
I'm hoping that eventually, if my psychiatrist keeps telling me that sometimes it takes time for some people, it takes a bit longer. I still got about five or six sessions left. So there's still plenty of time yet for, for things to happen, for changes to come along. So once again, it's another fake it until you make it, right? If you keep repeating things enough, keep trying hard enough, eventually something's got to give. That or you just knock yourself out from beating your head off the wall, one or the other. Since my anxiety's up, I'm going to look for some nature sounds to listen to. See what, uh, see what I can come up with for me and my dog. See, he, uh, he enjoys them too. At least I think he does. He gets pretty relaxed. All right, that should work. I think I'll do a little reading here now to uh, settle my mind a bit. It's uh, it's all over the place right now. I don't think meditation will work, so we'll see if Stephen King can help me. <laughs> he probably won't, but. If I can get past the first few lines, then I might get soaked into it a bit. What are the chances they'll do house calls, I wonder? 14 cab rides back and forth. I know, I'm sounding like I'm whining again. Yes, I'm tired of cab rides as well. I know, it could be a lot worse. Could have to pay for them out of my pocket, right? Still waiting for my ride. I got about nine minutes. And I don't know if any of you experience this or not, but when you have a lot of anxiety over an extended period of time, you end up developing irritable bowel syndrome. Too much information, I know. But when I get nervous and anxious and all that, it happens, right? Let's hope I got time. <laughs> Crisis averted. <laughs> Let's see if he's still here or if he made it yet. No cab. I'm good. I still got a minute left. After all those coffees, I need to hydrate a bit. Plus, it's long over in that room <clears throat> for an hour or more without water. I drink water quite a bit. So, got to get it in me now while I can. Besides, in about two minutes, I'm no longer allowed to drink any fluids. Hey, there he is. You know you've been at this a while when the cab driver starts to recognize you. Anyway, I'm gonna listen to some Foo Fighters for a few minutes before I head up. Time to head up those stairs. Get the elevator. I'm always anxious, so I always gotta walk over here to uh, settle my nerves before I go in. Here we go. Yes, I am. Just had my second dose. Today I am listening to Deciduous Forest. So I'm going to be imagining myself sitting somewhere in the sun in the forest somewhere, just relaxing and enjoying myself. That's where I'm gonna be. Plus, I got nice colorful Tic Tacs this time. I'm all set. See you soon. They're fruit flavored. Mm.
Well, another one done. Standing up is always clumsy. Until next week. Looks like my ride. You waiting for me? <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm always dried out when I come back. I don't know if it's the ketamine treatments or just the fact that I had to stop drinking water before the treatment. Because I'm constantly intaking some form of liquid. It's either coffee or water. That's pretty much it. But let's see if I can get the dog move. Watch. Walk. Yeah. You sure you want to go? Hey. <laughs> All right, let's go. At least one of us is in a good mood, hey? Eh? All ready to go? All right. I think I should have dressed warmer for this walk. I'm froze. <laughs> my hands are anyway. My head's okay. The rest of me's all right. Just my hands. <laughs> and I'm still a little dizzy from that ketamine treatment. But I have my nice little walking stick with me. So my uh, snowshoe pole. So that helps. Do you ever feel lonely or alone? I'm starting to. And it's a new feeling to me it's a new emotion it's a new uh, negative emotion that I'm feeling I'm somebody I've always embraced solitude I love solitude like I get overstimulated around crowds lights noises whatever and so I avoid most situations that involve being around people but over the last uh, few years I've noticed that I've been pushing people away. People that mean well to me, that are there for me. And just simply by not responding maybe to messages, like ghosting them, I guess, in, a, in some situations, I, I push them away and I'm starting to notice that, I, that the people in my corner are dwindling away to like, I think there's two or three people that, I think three people I talked on a regular basis on Messenger. And uh, used to be a lot more than that. I used to do a lot more interaction on social media, but that's all dwindling away. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a different feeling because I got this friend of mine who I reconnected with about a year and a half, two years ago, who was always talking about how that's their biggest fear is being alone. Like just loneliness, being alone. And and I was in shock because I couldn't understand like how can you want, how can you not want to be alone? How can you not want to enjoy solitude, peace and quiet? Nobody chatting your ears off, nobody flicking lights on and off or making loud noises or interrupting and, and all that. And uh, and there's something to what, uh, what she was saying because uh, I'm starting to feel that fear now. It's like I, like I said, I've noticed that 
I've pushed so many people away that I'm backed into kind of a little corner now with uh, with just three or four people that I tend to communicate with on a regular basis. So I don't know if this loneliness thing is going to be something that's going to be problematic for me or not yet. It's hard to tell. Maybe I need to move and start over or something. But, I mean, who wants to start making new friends at 52 Almost 52. Not quite yet. But it's hard. It's like when you hate being out in groups and crowds and doing all the things that your friends do. It's it's hard to stay connected with them when you don't you just don't want to be involved with with the activity. And uh, I'm not sure how to handle that and how to deal with it. I mean, yes, one thing I can do is start reaching out to old friends and say, hey, how you doing? But to me, that's almost superficial. It feels fake, even though these friends are people who I still never, ever stopped caring about. Never stopped caring about. Uh, I just, uh, just stopped hanging out with, I guess. So... Do I knock on doors? Do I start ringing messengers? Say, hey, what do you want to do? You want to go for a coffee? <laughs> As someone who loves solitude, it's hard when all of a sudden you realize that solitude isn't that great. And my most recent experience with that was when my wife and my son were in New Brunswick because my wife's father passed away in January and she was away for about four, six weeks, I think. And my son was gone for a week or so. And that was the loneliest I've ever felt in my entire life. And it's the first time I actually felt loneliness like that. And, uh, and I didn't enjoy it at all. But of course, that starts stirring and conjuring up greater fears. Like, am I destined? Like, since I'm pushing so many people away now, am I going to keep doing that? And am I destined just to live my life out as this lonely asshole who just doesn't want to be around people? It's a... Uh, Yeah, that's not a very pleasant thought, is it? It would be nice if it was as simple as if somebody says, Hey, Jason, you want to go for coffee? And I'm, yeah, okay, let's go. But it's never that simple because I'm always got, I've always got something preventing me from being able to go. It could be my anxiety. It could be my depression. It could be just my anger could be my IBS, it could be numerous things that will prevent me from being able to go out. And I'm very quick at using any one of them as an excuse as well. I'm introverted too, so I mean, introverts don't like being around crowds anyway. So it's, uh, that adds to it as well. Yeah, here I am, married with a loving wife, loving children, great parents, very supportive family. But yet I feel lonely. That's uh, yeah, that one makes the wheel spin a bit. Makes you wonder. So in the midst of all this loneliness, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, accompanying me on this journey, or whatever you want to call it. It probably is a journey. It seems that way. <laughs> But anyway, I appreciate you watching and being supportive. It's, uh, it's important to me, and it means a lot, despite my lack of responses to comments. I'm bad for that. I'm very, I procrastinate with everything. And even replying to messages seems a bit overwhelming and a bit much at times. Just thinking about the words to say in response to, to something that you might have said to me. And it's, uh, it's a battle, 
But anyway, thanks, thanks for watching and thanks for your support and I'll see you again in my next video.